Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hope everyone had a nice weekend. Um, I don't have anything off the top. Daphne, you want to kick us off? Yeah, thank you. Um, just on Israel, Lebanon, yeah. uh, I saw Kirby's comments that conversations have taken place over the weekend after the rocket strike in Golan Heights that killed 12 children and teenagers. What conversations has the U.S. been having with Israel and Lebanon since that strike? So I'm certainly not going to uh, get into the specifics of the diplomatic engagement staff, but first let me just say we strongly condemn Lebanese Hezbollah's rocket attack that struck a soccer field in Majdal Sham's area of Golan Heights over the weekend, killing 12 children. Uh, Secretary Blinken spoke with Israeli President Isaac Herzog today. He expressed condolences for those killed, and uh, the United States prioritizes the protection protection of civilians in any conflict, and we mourn every loss of civilian life. The uh, conflict along the Blue Line along um, Israel and Hezbollah has gone on for long enough, and it's in everyone's in interest for it to resolve uh, quickly. We continue to believe a diplomatic resolution is both achievable and urgent, and we continue to be engaged in diplomatic talks uh, because our ultimate goal here is for civilians on both sides of the border to be able to safely uh, return to their home. Uh, and so those conversations are ongoing and will continue to uh, coordinate closely with the with the relevant parties. Uh, have you urged Israel to exercise restraint in their retaliation at all? So look, uh, first and foremost, Israel has uh, a right to defend itself from terrorism uh, and we're continuing to engage in ongoing conversations uh, with all parties. And then just on Gaza ceasefire talks, Kirby said there's no indication that the strike is going to negatively affect those discussions. How, co how confident are you that this won't affect those Gaza ceasefire talks? Um, you know, if this turns into a few days of fighting, as uh, Israeli officials have said they're preparing for, could this derail talks at all? Well, certainly we believe that a ceasefire in Gaza could also help bring, uh, uh, help relieve the tensions along the blue line, uh, it could help relieve those tensions and creating the conditions, as I've said, for displaced uh, Lebanese civilians to go home in the south and for Israeli civilians to go home in the north. Uh, as it relates to broader ceasefire efforts, um, we are continuing to engage in the process. We are hopeful uh, about the developments as they progress. Uh, the negotiations are ongoing and we continue to believe that a deal is both achievable, but not only is it achievable, we think that it is uh, necessary and urgent. And so those conversations are going to continue ongoing. Obviously, as Matt and the Secretary and others have said when they've been asked similar questions, it's uh, not helpful to negotiate on the inner workings of those publicly, but uh, we're going to continue to engage in the process. And Hamas has accused Israel of blocking a ceasefire, saying Netanyahu's government has inserted new conditions into the proposal at the latest talks. Is that your assessment as well? And this comes after Netanyahu's visit to D.C., where U.S. officials emphasize the importance of a ceasefire. So are you concerned about the timing? So I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to uh, get into the specifics of the negotiating process and certainly not going to negotiate from up here. There are a, a number of complicated details that need to be worked out, um, and I'm not going to outline those publicly. But again, we think a deal is both achievable uh, and we think it's urgent. And as we have said previously and consistently, um, uh, there has been a deal that was on the table, and Hamas needs to accept that deal. And we expect these conversations to, to, to keep on going. Has Israel inserted new conditions? Again, I'm just not going to speak to the uh, the negotiation process from here. Jenny. Following up on Daphne's questions yeah. on um, Lebanon, has mm -hmm. the U.S. specifically warned Israel against striking Beirut? Yes, it's part of its response. I'm not going to speak to specific uh, diplomatic engagements, Jenny. Uh, first and foremost, let me just reiterate what I've said previously, is that Israel has a right to defend itself against terrorism. We are continuing to uh, engage and we're continuing to seek a durable diplomatic solution that ends uh, all types of cross-border fire, and it makes it possible for those who are displaced on both sides to return home. That is uh, our priority. Does the U.S. consider striking Beirut with in the right to defend itself, given the potential for escalation? This is, that, that, that's just a hypothetical, Jenny. We're not going to get ahead of that process. What we're focused on right now is engaging in a diplomatic conversation with both sides. Our priority is creating the conditions so that civilians on both sides of the borders can safely uh, return home. A number of carriers have canceled flights to Lebanon. How is the uh, State Department preparing to help U.S. citizens who might want to So there? we have no higher priority than the safety and security of U.S. citizens overseas. Uh, our message to 
American citizens uh, in Lebanon continues to be that they should enroll in the Smart Traveler program so that they can re receive important messages about the safety conditions on the ground and other uh, considerations and factors uh, that they may have. Uh, we don't have any plans for uh, or an announcement as it relates to an evacuation or uh, uh, efforts for private U.S. citizens from Lebanon. I will also use this opportunity to remind folks that uh, as it relates to the travel advisory warning for the entire country, that continues to be at a level three, and specifically southern Lebanon is at a level four. Commercial flights, some of them continue to remain available, uh, and so we encourage American citizens to look into those options. Uh, but in addition to uh, uh, enrolling in smart travel, there's a number of other steps that we think that they can take. Um, they should make sure to have a plan in place. Uh, they should also make sure that their U.S. passport is valid. Um, all of these things, if they enroll in Smart Traveler and engage with um, our, our consular team, those are things that we can assist with. And has there been any change in the posture at the embassy in terms of not. staffing or security? There is not. Can well, yeah. follow on these themes generally? Yeah. I mean, what is the department's understanding, uh, including through the secretary's engagements, of how much of Israel's retaliatory response we've already seen? Were, were the strikes this weekend the beginning, the middle, the end? I'm just not going to speculate on that, Olivia, and that's something I will leave it to uh, our Israeli partners in the IDF to speak to. What I can say is that what the United States is squarely focused on, which is one, uh, ensuring that uh, we come to some kind of durable diplomatic solution that is uh, that will allow civilians uh, in both Israel and Lebanon to be able to safely return home. That's what our uh, priority is. We'll also continue to remain engaged um, with uh, officials in Lebanon as well as uh, officials in in Israel as well. I, I mean, the Prime Minister said that the response is coming and it will be severe, indicating that there may be more to come. Is the U.S. preparing for that kind of a scenario? We are engaging with uh, uh, the relevant uh, entities uh, continuously, as well as continuing to remain focused on a durable diplomatic solution. I'm not going to get ahead of what's going to happen here or try to um, speculate or preview. Uh, uh, first and foremost, again, we strongly condemn uh, this attack that struck the f soccer field. But beyond that, um, we're continuing to engage uh, to ensure that there is some kind of durable diplomatic solution. I, and I'm just not going to get ahead of that. Okay. And so on hostage talks, yeah. just to circle back, because, I mean, they took place in Rome. We know it was publicly reported. They broke up within a matter of hours um, with the Mossad director returning to Israel without an apparent breakthrough. I know you don't want to get into the nitty gritty, but Hamas said that new conditions have been placed on the table by Israel. Is that inaccurate in your view? You are exactly right that I'm not going to uh, get into the nitty gritty and outline the details of these negotiations publicly. I'll echo what I just said to Daphne, what you've heard Matt say as recently as last week. Uh, uh, we are hopeful about the developments and the progress that is being made. These are processes that are ongoing. We believe a deal is both achievable and urgent. There are, of course, uh, a number of complicated details that continue to need to be worked out, but I'm not going to um, get into them specifically from up here. That would be unhelpful for the process. Uh, what I can say is that there has been uh, too much suffering for far too long, and we believe that it's uh, time for this war to end. We think that a ceasefire can unlock a great deal. We think it creates the ability for uh, hostages, the remaining hostages, to be returned home, including the remaining Americans. We believe that it creates the conditions so that uh, an additional influx of humanitarian aid can uh, make its way into Gaza to help address the um, dire circumstances in Gaza. And perhaps most importantly, it, it creates the condition that will allow um, relevant actors to have uh, serious diplomatic conversations about the region's future and get us out of uh, these endless cycles of violence. Uh, that's what we think is at stake, and that's what we're going to continue to work towards. But I know that there is a lot of interest uh, in uh, the, the details and the negotiations and the back and forth, and I'm just not going to get into those publicly. Sure. It's just for consistency, because sure. you and Matt and other U.S. officials have not hesitated to say when the ball is in Hamas's court. So I'm just wondering whose court the ball is in now. I mean, U.S. officials last week made a, went to great lengths to stress how much they were dialing up the pressure on Prime Minister Netanyahu. The deal is closable, it needs to be closed, subject to some implementation issues. Let's, so so wh who, who is causing the hang up now? I'm not going to get into, uh, again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the negotiations, but let's look at this from a little bit of a wider lens and, 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 and take a step back here. Consistently, since uh, when I believe it was about 
uh, a month and a half ago when President Biden went into the Roosevelt Room and laid out the contours of this proposal that had been on the table, this proposal that um, Israel had agreed to, that Arab partners had agreed to, that the United Nations had supported, that the UN Security Council had supported. Um, it, time and time again, it continued to be uh, Hamas that uh, uh, changed pieces of the deal and changed pieces of the proposal. Uh, so this is a process that is ongoing, uh, and we're going to continue to work with uh, uh, work through this process. And I'm not going to get into the specifics. Okay. I mean, you just said Hamas changed the conditions without saying what who is changing the conditions now. But I understand we may not get an answer on this. One more, just uh, on the vice president's comments last week, because some uh, far right uh, officials in Israel took issue with those comments, saying she was calling for a truce or uh, a surrender. Do you have any response to, I think it was um, Ben Gavir and Smotrich who came uh, Well, look, uh, I think it's uh, it's pretty clear that uh, th those are characterizations that very much takes the vice president's comments uh, out of context. The vice president was uh, clearly um, uh, stating what has been this administration's position, that a ceasefire is that, uh, uh, of utmost importance and that it can unlock a great deal. Some of the things that I just spoke about, the release of America. American hostages, the uh, influx of humanitarian aid. And that's why we think uh, it, this is something that is timely, it needs to be urgent, and uh, it's something that needs to be prioritized. Follow up. Side. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sorry for walking in late. But just oh. to follow up on Olivia's point, I mean, you in the past, uh, you or Matt did not hesitate in saying that the ball was in Hamas's court. Why this time around you are unwilling to say who is? you know, standing in the way of arriving at a deal. Because there are all kinds of reports that Mr. Netanyahu has had a change of heart. He actually agreed to something, then he changed his mind. So uh, I'm not going to just, I, I'm not going to get into a back and forth on, on hearsay and mm -hmm. uh, what may or may not be uh, true when it comes to public reporting or not. What I can say is this, Saeed, is that these are negotiations, these are processes that are ongoing. Um, we're going to continue to be engaged in those efforts. Uh, there continue to be a number of details uh, and issues that need to be worked out, uh, but we continue to believe that a deal is achievable. Not only is it achievable, but for all the reasons um, that I laid out, coming to a deal uh, should be uh, of utmost importance. And it is true that at various times throughout this process, Saeed, um, uh, Hamas has uh, changed the goalposts. It has uh, changed conditions. Uh, that has been true without us getting into the specifics of um, the negotiations process, which I'm not going to get into now. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that the Israeli government or Mr. Netanyahu has not changed position from the original I'm just not uh, speaking to the specifics. That was, I'm that not was uh, you know, announced by I'm, the President I'm, of the United States on May 31. I'm not speaking to the specifics of the negotiations. Right. Side. Okay, just a couple more things, yeah. if you allow me. I know on Medjil Shams, I'm sure that I walked in late. You spoke about that. Yep. Uh, but, you know, does that in any way, I mean, it's a, a tragic uh, incident, of course, but that in, in any way spotlight the fact that the Golan Height is occupied Syrian territory, that Medjil Shams, is a Syrian town, that the people that were killed were actually Syrian citizens. Does that spotlight the fact that this occupation, is, it's time for this occupation to end? Said, uh, our U.S. policy on the Golan Heights um, has not changed under this right. administration. That okay. should be uh, no surprise to you. I will echo what you've heard the Secretary say uh, a, a number of times, that uh, Golan is uh, very important and vital to Israel's security. And as right. long as the Assad regime is in power in Syria, as long as Iran and its proxies uh, continue to be present in Syria, uh, by as long as militia groups backed by Iran continue to be in Syria, and the Assad regime itself poses a uh, significant security threat uh, to Israel. As a practical matter, the control of the Golan, um, it, it uh, remains of real importance to Israel's security. Right. So you're saying that you know the designation of the Golan High, according to 242 and 338, as occupied territory is contingent on who is leading Syria so and who is the ruler of Syria? What I'm or saying is that, is that our that policy our policy as it relates to the Golan Heights hasn't right. changed. Okay, let me ask you a couple more questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, the IDF just destroyed a key Rafah water facility. Um, you know, that, do you have any comment on that? Are you aware of the report 
And do you have any comment? We have seen those reports, Saeed, and we have uh, been in touch with our partners in Israel and the IDF or as it relates to uh, seeking out additional information. Uh, over the course of this con like you have seen myself, Matt, and others right. uh, speak clearly about the importance of not targeting um, civilian infrastructure, things like water, sewage treatment plants, things like that. Um, of course, such a facility like this one would be uh, inconsistent with that. But again, I don't have any additional information beyond uh, what's out there publicly, and we have uh, sought out additional information as to what happened. And lastly, the Netanyahu government uh, postponed the evacuation of 150 sick Palestinian wounded children from Gaza because of what happened in Majdal Shem. Do you think these two issues ought to be tied? Certainly not. Uh, I, I don't know the uh, circumstances around that, Said. I don't know the underlying circumstances. Uh, what I can say is that every effort possible should be taken to protect and minimize civilian casualties, expects, uh, including and especially children. But uh, I don't want to uh, uh, just assume that uh, these issues are related or not, Said. So we'll see if there's additional information there. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Vidant. Yeah. I just want to go back to your answer to Said about the Golan Heights. Yeah. You mentioned that the control, uh, the Israeli control, is a security necessity for Israel as long as Assad and other villains are uh, operating in Syria. But are you? Is this a, a walk back from the recognition of uh, Trump administration of Golan Heights as a sovereign territory of Israel? Our position on our policy uh, has not changed. So, so it is a sovereign territory of Israel. The, our policy as it relates to the Golan Heights has not changed. The Secretary has spoken about this since the beginning of this administration, uh, and we have consistently uh, talked about it in the same way, and our position has not changed. Okay, and my second question is about yeah. the Hezbollah incidents. Mm -hmm. uh, Hezbollah denying this, and uh, Israel and the uh, United States uh, uh, accused him of it. Do you have any independent verification that it was Hezbollah, or are you relying on Israeli information? So uh, I'm not going to get into the um, uh, the underlying uh, data that uh, supports this assessment, um, but what I can say is that uh, this attack was conducted by Hezbollah. It was their rocket, and it was launched from an area they control, and any assertion to the contrary uh, would be a denial of reality. Uh, uh, this is your U.S. assessment. It's U.S. Assessment. I, I'm not going to get into the underlying uh, uh, underlying uh, circumstances of this assessment, but it is the uh, it is our assessment that this was uh, an, an an attack by Hezbollah again because it was their rocket and it was launched from uh, a region and area they control. The U.S. embassy issued a warning to U.S. citizens in Lebanon, asking them to leave as soon as possible. Is this? A lot of people in the, in the region uh, taking this as a, a warning of a looming war. Is that is that where you is that your assessment of what's coming up? So the you have to the, the important thing to remember is that when it comes to our consular efforts, uh, we take the safety and security of uh, American citizens. Uh, it is of utmost importance to this Secretary of State. Um, we do not think that any kind of uh, all-out war uh, is inevitable. That's certainly not what we believe, and we continue to believe that uh, through diplomacy it's possible to continue to uh, create conditions in which civilians are able to safely return to their homes, both in Israel and Lebanon. But uh, when we're talking about the safety and security of the American citizens, and especially American citizens living in the region, living in Lebanon, uh, we have a responsibility to make sure that they have the uh, most up-to-date and relevant information as it relates to safety conditions uh, to countries uh, where they travel. And as it relates to Lebanon, uh, as it relates to the whole country that continues to be a level three for reconsider travel, and for southern Lebanon that continues to be a level four for do not travel. And that is because um, what we're talking about is safety. And right now, yes, the, the safe thing for American citizens to do would be to uh, make appropriate plans, um, some of which, which I laid out um, to Jenny when she asked her question earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Michelle, go ahead. The question uh, uh, on, on your confidence, uh, <laughs> to what extent are you confident as Kirby is that there will be no all-out war uh, between Israel and Hezbollah when Israel reacts? And 
Where is this confidence coming from? Well, uh, Michelle, certainly it is not uh, helpful for you to ask such a question uh, dealing in such kind of absolutes. What I can say is that what we're focused on is the work at hand, and our and our the work at hand for us is continuing to engage in diplomacy and finding a durable diplomatic solution, which, as I said, will allow civilians to safely uh, uh, return to their homes. Uh, we're con going to continue to engage with uh, officials both in Lebanon and in Israel. You saw the secretary um, had the opportunity to speak to um, President Herzog uh, earlier, and we'll continue that kind of engagement and focused on the region. Did you talk to Iran about the escalation in, uh, in Lebanon and Israel? Uh, I'm not aware of any conversations. Directly or indirectly? I, I'm, I'm not aware of any conversations, Michelle. Through Oman or? Uh, like I said, I'm not Qatar aware of any conversations with Iran. DR, yeah, go ahead. The Iran. Yeah. Yeah. The Iranian president is set to inaugurate, and what do you expect from his administration? Is there any space for improvement between the U.S. and Iran when it comes to the nuclear deal and also the, the, the things that are happening in the region? Let me say, let me say a couple things. So first, uh, we have no expectation that uh, the, that the new president's election, that uh, that it's going to lead to any fundamental change in Iran's direction or that it's going to lead to any additional or more respect uh, for the basic human rights of its citizens. Uh, we are going to judge, uh, just as we always have, Iran's leadership by their actions, not by uh, their words or even um, claims of moderation or claims of uh, wanting uh, better ties. Uh, the proof is in the pudding, and the, the proof is going to be reflected um, in the actions that they take. Uh, and as it relates to uh, your question about um, the nuclear pro program, look, our approach is unchanged. We have long said that ultimately we view diplomacy as the best way to achieve an effective, sustainable solution with regards to Iran's nuclear program. Um, nothing about this election has changed that. But still, as we've also said, we are far away from anything like that right now happening, given uh, Iran's numerous escalations across the board, including its nuclear escalation as as well as its failure to cooperate with the IAEA. Um, I just said that we will judge Iran's leadership by its actions, not their words. Uh, if there is a desire to show seriousness or a new approach, certainly there is some immediate actions that they could take, which would be meaningfully cooperating with the IAEA. And just staying on that uh, diplomacy. Yeah. It's been a long time that you say that we see diplomacy as the best way to dealing with Iran and the Iranian nuclear program. Has the diplomacy worked with the Iranian government so far? Sorry, I'm not. Has the diplomacy, has the diplomacy tools worked with Iran to bring Iran to the table and to make Iran to not uh, enrich uranium and to not pursue the dreams of getting nuclear weapon? That is something that we're going to continue to uh, remain deeply focused on. Uh, I will say that um, uh, diplomacy has uh, sought out results that certainly uh, the United States uh, is interested in. If you recall just last fall or uh, late last summer, you saw uh, through our engagement, we were able to successfully release American citizens who were being uh, detained by the Iranian regime. So certainly uh, there are conditions in which uh, the end result of diplomacy um, has a desired outcome for the United States. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I want yeah. to go back um, to the Israeli uh, Hezbollah mm -hmm. uh, topic on this. Earlier, you said that you're engaged with relevant entities. I was wondering if uh, the U.S. has communicated with the Islamic Republic of Iran about just, what's going? Just as Michelle. just ask. Sorry Michelle about just that. Asked that question. <laughs> I just walked in. All good. Today, Pazishkian, the president-elect, you know. Yeah. Uh, threatened, if you've already answered I, I spoke to it a little bit, but I, I'll give you the, the Cliff Notes version uh, uh, that I, when I'm answering DR. Uh, this new inauguration, this new election, um, certainly we are aware, we are tracking, we are also tracking the uh, potential formation of a, of a cabinet, uh, but none of that uh, gives us the expectation or uh, the thinking that there is going to be a fundamental change in uh, the direction that the uh, Iranian regime is going in or uh, that we are going to see a more respect for basic human rights uh, from the Iranian regime. And as I said to DR, um, the, the proof is going to be in actions, in the, in the actions that they take, not not, uh, you know, empty words. And that's domestic wise. What about um, his threat that if Israel attacks Hezbollah, that it 
will have to face um, serious consequences. Well, first, let me just say that uh, Israel has every right to defend itself, uh, not only from terrorism, but also uh, defend itself from uh, malign actors like the um, uh, Iranian regime. Uh, and certainly this is something that the United States is continuing to pay uh, close attention to as well. Go ahead. Thank you, Vedant. How do you view the role of Bangladeshi law enforcement agencies in running a witch hunt against innocent young people, shooting them under shoot on site orders by the ruling Prime Minister Hasina and forcing key student organizers to give statements after being tortured while in custody, which are then circulated by the controlled media, especially when they show visible torture marks? And I have one follow up. So uh, as it relates to Bangladesh, both uh, in public and private, we continue to call for a lasting and peaceful resolution to the current situation. And we reiterate our unwavering support for the freedom of peaceful assembly. Uh, we're aware of some restoration of uh, telecommunications across Bangladesh, uh, but we are calling for a full and undisrupted public access to internet and social media services. This will enable people in Bangladesh, including uh, our very own American citizens, to be able to access critical information. I have seen numerous members of the House of Representatives and Senators expressing concern in solidarity with the student protest in Bangladesh. Congressman Lloyd Doggett described PM Hasina in Bangladesh screwing student protest as militant who deserve deadly force. The only militant is Hasina who ordered troops in peacekeeping vehicles to attack and kill students. The Biden administration must act boldly against this repression, what is your response? So we, um, we of course, support all uh, efforts uh, for those who want to peacefully uh, protest. Uh, and as it relates to uh, engagement with Congress, I I'm not going to speak to specific correspondence, but uh, we, of course, continue to be deeply responsive to any uh, questions our colleagues in the Congress might have. Oh, oh. Go ahead, in the back, oh, oh. in the white. Yeah, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm Celia from VOA Latin America. So yeah. um, just recently, um, the Maduro government, um, the lead prosecutor in Venezuela named opposition leader Maria Corina Machado as the key suspect of the alleged electoral sabotage uh, from last line. Um, so is there any concerns by the administration that she might be a target and possibly be arrested within the next hours? Um, also, some of the um, um, OAS members have requested an emergency meeting after the election in Venezuela. Um, how the U.S. will approach the meeting and what is the call after the election? Sure. So first, um, I don't have anything to preview as it relates to a potential OAS meeting. Uh, of course, again, OAS is a, is a vital partner, especially as it relates to our foreign policy in the Western Hemisphere, and we'll continue to uh, engage with them as appropriately. Um, uh, I will, uh, to your first question, let me just uh, echo what the Secretary said in uh, Tokyo uh, in that, uh, first, we applaud the Venezuelan people for their participation in the presidential election, and we commend their courageous uh, and commitment uh, demo to democracy in the face of repression and adversity. Um, we've seen the announcement from overnight by the Venezuelan electoral representatives, and we have serious concerns that this uh, result does not reflect the will and the votes of the Venezuelan people. And it's critical that every vote is counted fairly and transparently and that election officials immediately share information with the opposition and independent observers without delay and that electoral representatives publish the detailed uh, tabulation of votes. That's what the United States is watching for. Uh, it's what the international community is watching for and we'll, we'll respond accordingly. I'm not going to speculate um, on any particular action that might take place in Venezuela. I will also just so note that um, this is something that, uh, as I said, countries around the world are watching very closely too. I believe within the hour of before I come came down, you saw a number of seven or eight countries across um, Latin America also express uh, serious concern and wanting to see um, these published uh, ta detailed tabulation of votes. So that's something that we'll continue to focus on. Just a last follow up. Uh -huh. um, so right now we're seeing protests in the streets uh, just by the cemetery in Caracas is, is aligned with fire and then the government is sending uh, now tanks. Um, some of the military has refused from actually uh, engage with the protesters. Uh, Maria Corina Machado, which is the, the leader of the opposition, has called for peace and not to protest. Um, she's actually launching a plan during uh, today um, um, events that she's holding. Um, 
is it a concern that this could escalate to um, a confrontation and that the government will double down into arrest and violence? I'm not going to speculate. Look, uh, we certainly would support anybody's right to peacefully protest and to peacefully uh, make their opinions and their point of view heard. And certainly we would take issue with any um, kind of violence, especially violence against those who are peacefully protesting. But I'm not going to speculate. Go ahead in the back. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. As you mentioned, Secretary Blinken was clear that the U.S. has concerned mm -hmm. that the results announced yesterday might yeah. not reflect the will of the voters in the pool. But as of today, does the U.S. recognize the results announced yesterday by the Venezuelan Electoral uh, Authority? Yes or no? Sorry, who? If today the United States recognized the result announced yesterday. So uh, yes. I don't I don't have a uh, we don't have any um, uh, announcement to make as it relates to that. What we are calling for is the immediate publication of uh, detailed polling results to ensure transparency and accountability. It's something that we are uh, looking for as well as other um, international and regional partners. Has there been any recent contact among U.S. officials from here? The State Department and international observers sent to Caracas it's, as the Brazilian diplomat Celso Amorim or others? It's certainly something that we're uh, paying attention closely to. I don't have any specific calls to read out for you, though. Go ahead in the back. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the Syrian Democratic Force, SDP, uh, as the AF, declared a general amnesty for detained and ISIS members. Uh, do you have any coordination on this, and how do you... How do you look at this? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of your question. Yeah, the Syrian you... Democratic Forces, SDF in Syria. SDF, uh -huh. Yeah, uh, so they declared a general amnesty for ISIS members um, to, to be released in, the, in their prisons. How do you look at this? So uh, I'm happy to check back on that. I'm not uh, tracking that issue broadly. When we've talked about uh, the the issues relating to the FDF, we SDF, sorry, um, we've spoken about the importance of um, the prisoners being able to uh, successfully be repatriated to their um, host countries. But I'm happy to check on this. And separately, uh, recently there have been new attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq, and do you think it is? a sign that Iranian-backed militias in Iraq are a threat on U.S. assets any time. So I'm certainly not going to speak to any uh, threat assessment or get into the details around that, but this is something you've heard us talk about before in that uh, uh, groups, proxies, uh, malign actors in Iraq who seek to bring harm on American forces or on American installations certainly need to be uh, held accountable and brought to justice. It's something that uh, we believe is important. It's also something that uh, we know that um, Iraqi officials uh, believe as well. Alex, go ahead. Thank you, yeah. Please, please bear with me. But before that, let me go back to Venezuela. Yeah. Actually. I'm having trouble on understanding the U.S. assessment at this point. The secretary said that it does not reflect the will or, or, or the voice of the people. What does it reflect? Is it stolen? Can you be precise about your assessment at this point? Uh, Alex, that is exactly what we are working uh, closely in close coordination with, with partners and allies to, uh, to unearth. And that is why you saw the secretary call for um, a, a publication of the detailed tabulation of votes. And that's what us and other regional partners um, are looking for as well. We have also seen some, some of the you know, like-minded uh, authoritarian leaders of Maduro, uh, you know, uh, let's say his allies, are congratulating him, you know, the Putin of the world, Aliyev, others. Uh, do you think they have compelling information uh, before they jump to the conclusion? Or? Do you know, Alex, I'm not a spokesperson for those governments, so I will leave it to them. But uh, echoing the secretary, we have serious concern about these results and uh, have concerns that they don't reflect the will and uh, the votes of the Venezuelan people. That is why it is... Uh, of, of great importance that every vote is counted fairly and transparently and that election officials immediately share information with opposition and independent observers. And on top of that, electoral representatives should publish the detailed tabulation of the votes. And that's what we're looking for. Thank you. Let me move to my region. Uh, yeah. On uh, Armenia Azerbaijan, special advisor uh, Bano just returned back from the region. He was there 
of uh, last week. Based on your conversation so far, do you have any hope in terms of some sort of breakthrough at this point? Uh, I'm not going to put a timeline on it, uh, Alex. Of course, this is something that uh, both the secretary and coordinator Bono continue to be uh, deeply engaged on, but I'm not going to, uh, I don't have any uh, specific updates for you or a timeline to offer. This is something we're going to continue to and, work And any with. comment on tomorrow's uh, first coming meeting between two Chinese army and diplomats uh, as part of their efforts to, you know, uh, uh, reconcile. No, I, do, I don't have anything to preview, Alex. Again, I'm just saying that this is something that the Secretary has been focused on and uh, will continue to be deeply engaged on it. Daphne, you've had her hand up. Uh, thank you. Just on Sudan, yeah. have you gotten any response from the SAF on whether they'll attend the August talks in Switzerland? We have not. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, did the U.S. Uh, launch any protest with the French government over the Olympics starting uh, when they did the whole insult of uh, Jesus? Uh, sorry, sorry. And did, did the United States do what? <clears throat> launch any protest with France over the insult of Jesus, what they did during the starting of Olympics. Uh, Many Christians and Muslims, uh, because Jesus is our uh, Muslim prophet as well. Any condemnation? Yeah, I'm certain not tracking that there was an uh, insult uh, to Jesus at the beginning of the Olympics, and certainly not something that uh, we would raise um, as it relates to the Olympics. So, okay. I don't have anything to uh, <clears throat> Congresswoman Nancy Mace has introduced a bill where she has asked that the Taliban regime in Afghanistan be designated as terrorist organization. Um, I don't know if you're aware or not, but TTP on Pakistan side under the U.S. Justice Department is a terrorist organization, but Taliban over there are not. So she has passed this bill. Do you uh, agree or do you support such a bill or no? I'm fairly certain the Taliban is a designated terrorist organization, Jalil. In Afghanistan? No, no, they are not, sir. Uh, but just so you know that Taliban in Afghanistan are not designated terrorists. I, yeah. I think you, I, I don't think that's, that's That is accurate. the case. Uh, just last one. Just uh, last we, one. Okay. Just last one, okay. please. Uh, today, 93 member of parliaments, uh, the election commission has moved them to Imran Khan's party, uh, the PTI. Uh, the election rigging and all the things have been mentioned to you several times. Uh, are you happy to hear that now? Justice has been served and the political party has got 93 members uh, back. So look, Jill, as it relates to uh, Pakistani domestic politics, um, uh, that is certainly not for us to uh, determine. That is for the uh, Pakistani people to decide what the United States is always going to do. We're going to partner with the government that is in the serving in the interest of the Pakistani people and the United States' interest. And that has um, historically uh, been our approach to Pakistan. Goyal. Thank you. Sir, two questions. Yeah. One, um, thousands of protesters were here when Israeli Prime Minister Mr. Netanyahu was here. Mm -hmm. But I want to bring something from my Indian American community and also millions of people around the globe and here in the U.S. When a U.S. flag was torn down, insulted, and burned down, and they took out from the pole and put their own flags. Mm -hmm. It was condemnation around the globe, including here. And people are in painful as to see this event here in Washington, D.C. So what message are Secretary of State or this department is getting from around the globe diplomatically and also at the same time, sir, what message you think those protesters were sending? So um, I'm not going to try and... Um get in the mind of what those pro messages those protesters were trying to send. Matt spoke to this a great deal last week. Um, we, of course, uh, respect and welcome everyone's right to peacefully protest to make their uh, points of view heard. Uh, we certainly uh, would not uh, support or condone the uh, not just the burning of the American flag, but the replacing it of replacing it with um, uh, paraphernalia and flags that are uh, evocative of Hamas, which is what we saw uh, happen um, last week. Uh, but again, we support and welcome people's right to peacefully protest, but the scenes that we saw um, at Union Station last week, that was uh, certainly uh, not that. Sir, Doc, before, go ahead. Second no, I'm going to have work Vidant, a little bit. Go ahead. Thank you, Vidant. Yeah. Uh, why isn't the, the UN peacekeeping force uh, in Lebanon, UNIFIL, doing its job, why has it become a, a farce, and what can the U.S. exert to get UNIFIL to stop Hezbollah? 
So uh, I will let the United Nations speak to um, any efforts or any role that they're uh, playing in uh, Lebanon. What I can say from the United States perspective is that we are again focused on uh, coming to a durable diplomatic solution that will allow for citizens on both sides of the border to be able to safely return home. Okay, and then once again, uh, Hezbollah has fired thousands of rockets at Israelis, uh, and yet now when Israel is forced to issue a reprisal, there are calls for restraint against Israel. Why and why isn't the U.S. holding Lebanon uh, scot-free in all of this? And where is Lebanon's army to step Hezbollah? So uh, let me just be very clear about this. At the beginning of this briefing, we clearly uh, condemned um, uh, Lebanese Hezbollah for this attack on a soccer field. And simultaneously, we continue to believe that Israel has every right to defend itself, especially uh, from terrorism. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, go ahead. Question. Yeah. The UN should uh, renew the UN Unifil mandate by the end of this, uh, of next month, uh, August. Uh, will the US uh, ask for uh, changes in uh, the mandate or? Um, I'm happy to check on that, Michelle. I, I'm happy to check with the team. I'm not sure uh, the details behind that, but I'll, I'll look and get back to you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Did you ask? Did you ask? Military, Lebanese, or both? Oh. Whoops.